Hello and welcome to another lap guide for the iRacing Camel GT series. This week we're at Summit Point. Here's the lap first. Okay, so left hand there is a 59708, and we have afternoon weather this week. So uh, the track temp that I tested in was just default weather, so we have a 106 Fahrenheit track temp. And uh, it really is quite a bit more challenging than what we had three seasons ago, where I think it was morning weather that we ran here. And uh, trying to get uh, kind of get a feel for the car again was definitely um, a learning experience here with the heat. And... What I'm using is a nine wing setup for this particular lap and what I'll be sharing. Um, you can actually get away with maybe dropping that down to an eight wing as the weather cools down a bit. But um, I just found that I could run pretty consistent uh, and quick laps with the uh, nine wing in this particular instance. So let's go ahead and jump back to the start of the lap and go through this in more detail now. All right, so coming down into turn one, breaking point for turn one is about the three cone, and uh, that's kind of where I begin to break and then threshold soon after that. Now, in this particular example, I think that I might have break just a hair late because you'll see as I get down to my turn in point, I actually miss that just a bit. So I did run a little wide of my turn in point, and Turn one's pretty tricky here because you really don't want to carry too much speed into the corner. You want to get your speed down to about the right amount where you can uh, get through here pre pretty smoothly, but you've got to get the car settled here at the mid-corner point. As you roll onto throttle, you've got to take a wider line off of the exit just because the inside line is incredibly bumpy. And with it being so bumpy, especially in the heat, combined with the heat, you can run into traction loss issues pretty quickly here. So you'll even notice that as I kind of come off the corner, I'm actually going to give it a quick correction because I started to feel a little bit of throttle oversteer. So this corner right here is, is where we're going to see a lot of issues with spins and whatnot. And so definitely uh, uh, try to be just cautious on throttle because not only are you taking kind of a wider line out of the corner, kind of a continuous turning, that also um, makes it, it takes longer to get straight, straightened up, and you kind of want to aim to get the car over to the left here so that you can straighten up kind of gradually and get on throttle gradually. So uh, as far as the um, uh, mid-corner point, so as you're, uh, as you're braking and then lifting, you're going to be trailing into it a bit, but by the time that you've kind of turned in and reached this, uh, uh, the curbing in the mid-corner point here, you really want to make sure that you're you're not doing too much braking at that point because what happens is if you're braking a little bit too hard, then uh, as you're turning in, the the car can actually oversteer right here at mid corner as well because it's also a little bit bumpy and just carrying just a little bit too much speed can also put you at risk of a spin there. So you want to make sure, like I said, to get the car settled here at the mid corner point so that as you begin to roll on throttle, that uh, there's not a whole lot going on with weight transfer and that... Um, the car can be pretty balanced as you roll into throttle because it is pretty difficult to get off this corner quickly without um, running a risk of that uh, oversteer on, on the exit. So let's play this through at speed. Yeah. 
All right, so coming down into turn two. So what I like to do for turn two is I'll, I'll start to break right at about where the car reaches the grass here to the right. And I'm trying to turn in right at about the midpoint here, of, as far as the midpoint is where you reach the grass. And so you'll see as I kind of come into that, where my tire is going to reach as I'm starting to turn in. And so I'm going to carry about 40, 30 to 40 percent break and then turn in pretty hard at that point. So um, if you turn in a little bit too soon here, you're going to get into the curb a little too soon. And with the just the the angle of the curbing, that's going to kind of push you wide. And so you don't want to apex into that curbing too soon. You really want to kind of aim to apex right at about the, uh, the latter half of that curbing. And as you do that, you'll be able to commit to the full throttle pretty quickly after. And then you're going to safely come up onto the curbing here without running too wide. Now, you can get off into the gravel a little bit without an off track, but depending on how much you get up into that gravel, that can unsettle the car a bit, enough to sometimes require a lift as it bounces around out of there. So try to avoid the gravel if you can. So uh, let's go ahead and play that one through at speed. All right, so turn three. Uh, in turn three, uh, you really have very little time to get into your braking zone and uh, get braked in time for this corner because you can, you're can you coming into this actually in fifth gear. And what I actually did is clip the curbing a little bit by mistake. Uh, I tried to avoid clipping that curbing there just because of how it kind of uh, unsettles the car as I'm trying to get over into that braking zone. But you can see just as soon as I kind of come around that bend, and, and reach the right hand side. I'm actually already into that braking zone and you really want to get the car as far to the right here as you can in that braking zone to open this up because the car can tend to understeer a bit and especially as you come flying through here in fifth gear if you if you find yourself braking just a little late then you're going to have a heck of a time getting the car turned in and it's just going to want to slide and wash out white on you and it's very important to hit every mark through this whole section of the track. So for turns four through nine, from here all the way through uh, the next five turns, you really just want to focus on hitting every mark and try to hit those marks accurately because once you miss one, it kind of throws off your rhythm, it throws off your line, and then you have to kind of adjust and you lose speed doing that. So uh, you really just want to make sure that you don't late break this because this is the first mark that you want to hit and you want to hit it correctly. So coming into the braking zone, there'll be that hard, uh, looks like I hit about a 70% brake here and uh, continuing to brake as I continue to move the car over down into second gear and now turning in with kind of an idea of just getting down as close to this curbing as possible without touching that too much and then rolling on throttle just as the car kind of leaves the curbing there just lightly, we're talking like less than half, 40% 40, 40 or so throttle as you kind of ease the car over. And then uh, as you straighten up, you can start to get in, feed in a little bit more throttle. My next target to hit is really just close to the, um, the dirt here before the line opens up. So I'll try to get the tires up over there because that's now where you're going to start to turn into the next corner. Light brake, turning in, and then um, getting relatively close to this corner. But... Coming around this next set of corners, you actually don't want to hug it too tightly because it's kind of a tight corner and you can actually lose traction by just hugging things too tightly. Before we get into that, let's play this at speed. All right, so as you come around turn, turn six, uh, in turn six, uh, you really kind of want to follow the uh, the patch of asphalt here that you can see there where they've replaced that and just kind of follow that out and it kind of comes out wide a bit now I don't go all the way out to the outside here in this case and I typically don't I think I typically just kind of run down the middle and uh, just kind of keep throttle you're really trying to st steer the car with throttle and uh, modulate that to the point where you're you know either not getting understeer or oversteer at the point where you can hit your marks. So the next mark that I'm looking for here into uh, turn seven is kind of the last part of this curb here. And I actually do touch that lightly, which you can get away with without, without too much trouble. So coming across that, and then I want to kind of angle the car out wide once again, and then come in tight to the left into turn eight. 
and actually get pretty close to the edge here. Could hit that a little bit better, but was just trying to keep the speed up. And uh, as I come around this corner, what I'm looking to do is again, kind of get all the way over to where the, um, the edge of the road comes up to the dirt here, because you could actually take this full throttle from this point all the way out if you hit it just right. Now, I tend to lift just a little bit just for safety. And um, there's also the upshift as well. But if you hit it just right, you can you can actually hit this full throttle all the way through. And so you do have to just kind of gauge that based on how, how close you are to your line. And if you're off your line, then you're going to have to compensate. And of course, as you compensate, you're going to lose a little bit of speed by doing so. So let's go ahead and play this through. So just another quick note about turns four through nine is that in in this weather especially you really want to pay close attention to overworking your tires and overdriving it because as you do and if you lock them up in braking or if you're you're turning in uh, with a little bit too much speed carrying a little too much speed in the corner and you can hear the tires being overworked you're going to notice it on the following corner you're, the grip is going to fall off as you reach the following corners as um, you've overworked those tires a bit and so uh, i think it's real important to just um, find kind of the uh, the point where you can push the car without overworking the tires and being able to still stick to your line and uh, even if you're hitting your line in one corner but you're hitting that corner just a little too fast and you're overworking the the, the tires a little too hard the following corner it, it like i say you're just going to catch up on you and, and you're going to see the grip kind of fall off on you a little bit so Really pay attention to tires in this hot afternoon weather to make sure you're not over overworking them too hard. Um, now on turn nine, uh, quick note on turn nine is that you really want to try, try to avoid too much curbing here on the right as well as on the left. Uh, what can happen is it's pretty bumpy. And if you get too much curbing, as you're getting on throttle here and as you're trying to get the car onto, up to full throttle through these corners, as the car kind of bounces around and bumps around, some kind, sometimes just a little bit too much bumping there can be enough to send the car into a spin. And that can happen right here on the exit of turn nine. So, and that's another one that'll potentially catch you off guard without warning. And before you before you know it, the car is spun and you can't save it. So definitely be, be wary of that. Last corner, turn 10. So my, my break and turning point is kind of in the, the um, the patch of gravel and grass here on the left. So kind of about the midpoint there, I'm gonna to get to about a 40% or so break and I downshift into fourth and then turn in right about that point. Again, try not to apex too soon because of the angle of the corner here. You kind of wanna come in again at the kind of latter part of the curbing here. And you're gonna to wanna to reach throttle by the time you reach that part of the curbing that last part of the curving and then carry full throttle all the way through the corner. Now, as you come off the exit of the corner, you can definitely come all the way up here, up close to the dirt, but I like to get back over to the main racing surface by the time the curb ends, because right over here, it's pretty bumpy. And depending on the angle that you hit that bump, and if you're getting a little bit of, of um, some of the sand, and if there's a lot of that kicked up on the road, that surface is gonna be pretty slippery in a race. So I would avoid just for safety running too wide, even though you, you can get away with it. I would try to avoid that just to avoid that chance of unsettling the car and having that uh, have, having to lift or losing control even there. So I like to get back over just before or right at about where the curbing ends there. And you can see that exit was pretty smooth. So let's go ahead and play that. All right, so there's a lap of Summit Point. Hope you found it helpful. Talk to you later.